evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And this show is brought to you by our friends at Massage Magazine Insurance Plus. Massage Magazine has been exploring touch therapies for over 25 years and has used that industry knowledge to develop the best value liability insurance in the business. Welcome, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massa um, massage Nerd. And tonight we have a very special guest from Canada, so Doug Alexander. Welcome, Doug. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Did I say Canada right? <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> if you need any pointers, I can give you some, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's, do, let's just get started to um, for people to know who you are. So how did you get involved in the field, and what have you done so far? Oh, my goodness. Well, I started in the field when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Um, <laughs> so I started in, in Calgary, um, in Alberta, but uh, 30 years ago, actually. 30 years ago this summer. Um, and I was, uh, I was really, originally I was a science nerd, you're the massage nerd, I was a science nerd, but I wasn't happy doing that, and uh, I wrote myself into the School of Fine Arts in Banff, and uh, to follow creative writing, and I met a woman who was doing massage therapy there, and I thought, wow, that's a cool thing to do, um, you know, I can use that to support myself when I follow my writing muse. And uh, so I studied in Calgary originally, and then I moved to Toronto and studied at Sutherland Chan there. And uh, I taught at Sutherland Chan for uh, quite a while, moved to Ottawa, started a journal, um, one of the first massage therapy journals, the Journal of Soft Tissue Manipulation. Ran that for 10 years for the uh, Ontario Massage Therapy Association. And now I teach full-time at Algonquin College in the massage therapy program. So... Yeah, I'm sort of a blend of, like, nerd and artiste. Yeah. <laughs> and our topic tonight, um, TMJ, um, syndrome with, with massage treatments and stuff. And how, how did this passion come into play with you then? Okay, well, I uh, one of the first things I got into post-graduation was uh, deep tissue work. So I studied a type of, uh, of deep tissue work um, that was integrative and so on. And we worked intraorally, and oh my golly, that was brutal. Um, you know, it was great, you know, in terms of my whole structure and everything, but when it came to the mouth, it was terrifying and painful and, and really hard. Then um, another year or two later, I did uh, some cranial training, and we worked intraorally again, and uh, that was a whole different thing, right? It was working with the bones, the palate, and so on. First training was all connective tissue. This was the, this was the, the osseous structures. And I thought, wait, wait a minute, you know, like, why can't I use this sort of craniosacral myofascial um, unwinding approach on masticatory muscles, being a massage therapist? So I spent a lot of time studying, you know, I went over Janet Travell's book, and um, I had a favorite uh, piece of dental literature, uh, Weldon Bell's Oral Facial Pains. Um, Weldon Bell was one of the first guys who got into TMJ problems and uh, as a dentist, and he said that... Um, you know, one should assume if someone's got pain around the head and neck that it's uh, muscle, muscular until proven otherwise. And then if it's in the face uh, or oral facial, he says, assume it's dental until proven otherwise. If it's proven to not be dental, then his next, um, his next priority would be muscles. So um, I studied Weldon Bell, stuck my fingers in a lot of people's mouths. And, um, and developed my approach, really. I had a license to practice. Um, since that time, I've worked at the Head, Neck, and Jaw Physiotherapy uh, in, in Ottawa, which is a world-class uh, physiotherapy um, and manual therapy clinic for people with jaw problems. And, um, and uh, yeah, I've been teaching this material for about 25 years in sort of a gradually evolving way. Um, I think what I bring to it that's a bit different is that I try not to traumatize people, um, because you can re-traumatize people, and uh, I also have a clinical, um, I, I assess people and put them in some kind of a, I get a sense of their, of the pattern of dysfunction, so that, um, say there's certain situations where a person's going to get a lot of tension, and you can help them with intra massage, but it only lasts for a few days and it keeps coming back. So um, I've got uh, a bit of a framework around that to be able to teach people some home care and some things they can do to help themselves so that it's not just they pour the tension in, I pour it out, they pour it in. You know, it pays the bills, but it's not really that ethical. 
you know, and then it seems like you have extreme passion for this too. Have you ever had problems yourself with TMJ um, syndrome or? Uh, yeah, well, um, I am a bit of a clencher, and uh, my, the very first time I went to the dentist, the uh, I was it was not good. I was a I was a little kid, obviously, and um, he had those little probes, you know, where you're um, you test the patency of the teeth and and so on. You're push these sharp instruments into them. I was sweating bullets, and um, he said to his assistant, oh, well, you know, little Susie down the hall, she had this done last week, and the Dr. Brown slipped, and he ripped right through her lower lip. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I was just, I was just petrified. Um, so uh, that was not good. Um, so sin, that really sort of set me up for a lifetime of really not wanting to, um, to really, you know, look in the dark in there and really own this part of my body. So um, that was the first thing that I, um, yeah, that, that's the that's the significant thing that I can talk about. I've had some other uh, trauma to uh, the orofacial region that I don't really want to get into right now, but um, it can be a whole lot to deal with, man. So is it legal to perform up in Canada then? Everything's legal in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, in Canada, intraoral massage is considered basic part of basic training for a massage therapist. So uh, everybody, you know, in all the provinces where massage therapy is uh, regulated, everybody's been trained in intraoral massage. I usually haven't been trained that well in it, just because the teachers weren't trained that well, and there's not too many specialty courses focusing on it. So it's done. There's a lot of things that. It could be done differently. To and I'll, I'll get into some of that tonight, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a message that you posted on Facebook too and stuff about um, in the United States about it being legal in certain states or not and stuff. And it was just all over the board whether it was or wasn't and stuff. And some people didn't know. And yeah, it's a shame because it, there's a lot of pain out there, man. There's a lot of people that. I've got um, you know really frank problems there, and then it's just another region of the body where you can store a ton of tension. Um, and if we, you can only get so far in terms of treating extra orally. And uh, you know people say, oh yeah, you know I treated extra orally, you know through the person's cheek, and I got some great results. Well, those results, that's great, but the the kind of results you can get by working intra orally are a whole magnitude uh, further along. Um, but you know, it's just one of these things, man. Like, you know, um, people can answer. If we ask a question, people can type in answers, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's ask people. How many people, um, you know, treat people's gluteal muscles? And it, you know? and it just might take a while for people to. It okay, depends how fast. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on. So basically, you know, you can treat somebody's gluteal muscles, like you know, have. You can keep their jeans on, you can treat them with their jeans, or you can have like a sheet over them, and you can have certain effects, right? But when you can really get your hands right on the skin of someone's gluteal muscles, there's all sorts of traction, no pun intended, that you can get uh, in a myofascial way with that. It's a much more direct contact. And intraoral massage is like a whole other level beyond that. So when you're inside somebody's mouth, the you're directly on the tissue, it's very very sensitive. Um, so the regular kinds of massage techniques need to be modified. And this whole thing about, you know, it's going to hurt, you know, but if you got to do it, go ahead. That's abuse as far as it's, it borders on abusive as far as I'm concerned. Um, because the tissue is so sensitive, the touch you need needs to be very, very light. Um, it's not that, you know, the person's got some kind of massage emergency and you have to do something for them. Generally speaking, the tension has been put in, in their body by them, by the thoughts and feelings and associations they have, as well as biomechanical usage patterns and so on. So really, um, they need to feel the tension in a way that's very you know, manageable, and they need to hook up neurologically the control centers that manage the alpha motor neuron activity of their masticatory muscles and unhook them. 
knock them down a notch. So, um, you know, generally speaking, unless someone got punched in the jaw or they were a boxer or something, they got fibrosis, um, it's a very responsive area. And the touch can be similarly, well, you know, you can, you can work wonders with a very light touch. Yeah. Most true. of the time. So we get any answer on the gluteal thing? Uh, nope, not yet. So I think they're kind okay. of shy. <laughs> okay, we love you guys. But yeah. You're just not. You're just not talking too much tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and what do you say about the people that perform deeper work in the mouth and they keep saying that they get benefit? I mean, the clients get benefit from it and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, sure. That I'm sure that's the case. Yeah. You know that. You know, you can hit people with a sledgehammer, and it, you can get away with it a lot of the time. Um, so if someone's got a fairly resilient system, then you can be very firm or quite challenging. Um, however, yeah, um, basically it's my, my sort of take on it is that, you know, I might be able to force someone to drop the tone in their master muscle. Um, but really, like, it's just like if I shout my children down, you know, they're really loud and everything, and I can shout them down and they'll be quiet. But really, is that what you want? And how quiet are they going to stay? As soon as you're out of the room, they're going to go back. And also, you, you, you know, you abuse them. You, you're teaching them that force works and all sorts of craziness. So, um, no, the jaw, in my experience, uh, needs to be treated very gently. I've treated people that, you know, have had horrible things happen to them. Yep. You know, been hit by baseball bats, been sexually abused. Um, you know, I had one client, and, um, you know, we were talking about the consent around the internal massage, and, and I said, you know, have you ever been injured here? And sort of, this is sort of like a mature level term, so if you're easily upset, you know, by adult language, you should just skip this, everyone. But um, what she said is, I was, I was orally raped and by someone who was close to her. Mm -hmm. And that, whole, that, that use of language actually brought it to my attention that actually she had something put down in her mouth that she thought she was going to die. She could not breathe and so on. So she had a lot of tension in there and it had been there for decades. So um, the, the framing of it, of the treatment, is that she, was, she didn't have any control over what was done to her. So that I'm here to help her with this tension that's been there for three or four decades. And I need to set the situation up so that she has control. And that's the very first thing. She needs to have control over the treatment. She needs to have control over whether my finger's in her mouth or not. Um, one of the things she'd had the same, you know, she had a, an interaction with a dentist, and and she she can't take um, anesthetic. This person, so uh, she had a root canal, and he's like, okay, you know, just let me know, you know, when you want me to pull the drill out. And she's like, yeah, it's going great, you know, stopping, starting, stopping, starting. He's almost done, and um, and it's getting really, really uncomfortable. And she puts her finger up, and he's thinking, oh, I can just just another second. She puts her finger up like this. He's just he ignores her. And then the drill went right through the bottom of her tooth and into the nerve. Oh. And uh, she broke his jaw. She punched him. Oh. She punched him once. She was a firm girl, and she broke his jaw. Oh. So, um, so you should always listen to your clients, you know. Um, but the thing is, is that you know, you can tell you know you can tell these war stories. But basically, um, I've had clients that you know were like punched and so on. Like I had a little lady, she was punched in the jaw, this drunk guy came out of a bar. Uh, I've had people hit by baseball bats, by trucks, um, you know, all sorts of things. Um, and people often will not tell you, you know, what their, you know, what their history is. So I advocate the equivalent of universal precautions. You know, universal precautions around body fluids is like you see blood or some other kind of body, body fluid like that, then you don't touch it unless you're gloved up, right? Well, when you're treating somebody in the jaw, I feel like you should treat everybody as if they've been traumatized there, that they, they've really not 
um, been respected by whatever it was that happened to them. Because there's so much shame in our culture. Um, and this is, a, this is a very, you know, favorite place for people to be abused. Um, so the therapeutic relationship needs to be set up in such a way that the person is in control of the therapy. And the therapy needs to be respectful of their boundaries. And when people say, oh, you do whatever you have to do, you say, I don't have to do anything. I'm just here to help you. And, you know, you've got this pattern of tension, and I'd like to help you unravel it, if, you know, if you'd like to and if you can. So, um, so you know, it, we're sort of going this a long ways, and it's important to, you know, but um, it's really quite remarkable just how little touch, how how little compression is required for someone's tissues to start unwinding. And then for the people that have got, they don't have traumatic issues and, you know, they've got just tons of muscle tension, I start off gently anyways. But as the muscle relaxes, then I can spread it and broaden it and lengthen it and really, you know, challenge it in an orthopedic way. But, um, you know, that's not my first approach. Yep. And then uh, there's a question in the chat from Donna. So if clenching teeth can lead to TMJ problems, do you find that people who have dentures more inclined to get TMJ problems, they have more room to close their mouths in a clenched fashion when their teeth are out? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so if you, if you don't have, like the first step of that, I guess, is that, you know, your teeth mesh in a particular way. And you've got this, um, you know, your, your osseous, your bony development, your myofascial development, your the development and growth of your bones, your muscles, the joints, and the teeth all went along a certain track. So um, if you don't, you know, let's say you lose a tooth or something, um, or your bones grow strangely, if there's no, if the meshing is not good, then you're going to have, you know, you're going to have problems. You have myofascial problems, articular problems, and tooth problems. So that's like the basic, you know, kind of layer of it. Then if you, if you, you know, if you lose all of your ten dentition, you don't have your dentures in, then yeah, you're basically, you're, it's like a joint, the TMJ is a joint, it's not being held, it's not being maintained in sort of a neutral posture, neutral position, and what will happen then is then you get in these odd postures and your muscles adapt to that. Um, I haven't, I think it is, I haven't had a lot of experience around the denture front, but certainly in terms of, um, you know, asymmetrical bone growth of one side of the mandible and stuff like that, that needs to be, you know, that person needs help from an orthodontist. So, yep. That's my roundabout way. Yep. You are putting me on the ropes, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, then you yeah. yep. and then you also have a PowerPoint then, right? I do, yep. yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, as part of the PowerPoint, it's the heads up. Um, I had a few places in it where we were going to ask people questions. If they don't answer, we're gonna, I'm going to make it up as I go along. Okay. You know, we'll just kind of because, of course, I've asked questions because I have certain, you know, um, pre like you know, I've got some ideas about what people would like to know. So, yep. Anyways, that's what's going on. So I, I'm ready for the PowerPoint if you are, Ryan. Okay, I got it up. Hmm. Okay, so we're on the first slide there? Yep. Sweet. Hey, everybody. Doug Alexander here. Um, <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, I'm in love with Ryan Oimi, but never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm here to share my obsession with yeah. intro massage. Uh, slide two there, Ryan. Okay. Uh, Doug Alexander, that's me there. Um, no, that is not somebody's jaw. Um, these come a massage therapist of long standing, and I, I teach a lot of different seminars and different areas of the body and different kinds of techniques and so on. Um, next slide, Ryan. Okay. Um, I've been teaching the intraoral massage for a long time, like two and a half decades or so, in an evolving uh, way. This has all been in a face to face, you know, hands on kind of seminar. Uh, slide four, Ryan. Um, last year, during my face to face seminars, I shot a bunch of high definition uh, video. I'd like to turn, you know, you can only teach so many people, you can only travel so many days um, of the year and so on. I wanted to provide an online resource for massage therapists. 
So we shot high def video of all the technical performances of the palpation and the evaluation and treatment and so on. Um, slide five there, Ryan. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm stitching together a um, head, neck, and jaw masterclass um, in an online setting, and I was hoping to get some feedback tonight so I can uh, cinch it up or tailor it a little bit more for people's, um, you know, what really, you know, is really sort of um, most challenging to people. Um, so this is your chance, man, to get a little bit of input. Um, slide six, please. Um, I've got a website, touchu.ca, and uh, you're cordially invited to learn there. And um, next frame there, Ryan, number uh, seven. Uh, at the moment, and for the next little while, at least uh, at least a month or so, I've got my master muscle course. It's an online course uh, with two uh, CEUs, and it's approved by uh, the National Certification Board for Therapeutic Massage and Body Work, as well as um, as well as all of the uh, English language regulatory bodies in Canada. Um, so at the end of the seminar or at the end of the evening, I'm going to show you guys how to get a hold of that. Um, so that's your little, you know, reward um, for hanging out. Uh, next frame, Ryan, number eight. Okay. So that's me. That's why I'm here. And why are you here? <laughs> Come on, you guys. Type furiously. <laughs> the, uh, the next frame, number nine. Uh, the first question is, do you practice intraoral massage? If you do, say yes and put in the state um, or province that you practice in. If you're not American or Canadian, just say the country. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have any like sort of geographical differentiation beyond the United States and Canada. So um, so if you do practice intro massage, say yes, please. And if you uh, don't, then say no. Ryan, are you getting overwhelmed with input? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they are really quiet tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, we got to carry this on our own. Um, okay, so slide 10 would be um, people telling us what uh, is really working well for them. So I really wanted a sense of, you know, who's out there? Like, who are you? And what's working for you? Because there are some people, like you said, you know, some people that are very firm in there. They're getting great results. It's just not my, you know, I'm prejudiced against that, you know, way of practicing. Um, because I've treated a bunch of people that are extremely sensitive. And even with a very light touch, it's very challenging. Um, slide 11 would be, if you're not doing this, why aren't you? And uh, that I'd like to know, because obviously uh, then we could address whatever your concerns are. Um, so I think um, I'm going to just keep rolling, because we are like 30 minutes into the show here. So yeah. Um, well, we Has anybody said one, anything that... Uh, one person answered no, so... Okay. Yeah. Well, this workshop is for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ryan and I are here for you tonight, man. You're actually yeah. responding. So, um, Mr. or Mrs. No, or Ms. No, um, if you want to tell us why you don't do it, then uh, let us know. We're, we're getting in communication with you. Um, slide 10, Ryan. So aside from um, addressing any of the issues raised by the no, um, these are the takeaways. I'd like to discuss with you how to minimize discomfort that your clients can feel. Um, uh, the concept of universal precautions, which I sort of hammered home there pretty much already. Um, and then indications, assessment, charting, and uh, home care support you can do for people. Uh, oh my goodness, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Anyways, we'll see how we roll here. Yep. Um, and if you have any questions about any of this material, you don't have to wait to be prompted by, by Ryan or I. Yep. Go there's ahead a, and, you know. Yep, there's, a, there's a couple of questions. Um, if, if we can't use our fingers in client's mouth, um, can we ask the client to push their tongue into their cheek, or will that not work? Okay, so I'm assuming this is as a, sort of a treatment protocol. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there are there's some really good things, man, to do with the tongue. Um, generally, the tongue I use the tongue, um, you know, clinically in terms of teaching people stuff, 
as a, um, it's sort of like a soft splint. So um, everybody out there, I know you're really shy, you're not typing anything in, you don't want to say anything, but try this if you will. Um, just, um, actually, can you put the, um, can you put me on the video there, Ryan? Yeah, no, just one second. Okay. So we got to, you know, we got some live ones out there. I think we got to, you know, nourish the relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can see me? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'd like to just uh, show you how to palpate your TMJ for a second. You feel the um, your ears, the tragus, the fullness here. You can feel your zygomatic arch. So your forefinger on uh, the tragus, and then the second finger uh, in front of it. And as you open and close, you'll feel your um, the, the conda of the mandible moving back and forth. So straddle that on both sides. And uh, if you want, you can take your thumbs and you can palpate your masseter, see what you got there in terms of tension and so on. And uh, what I suggest you try is, um, so feel, uh, just get a sense of the space between the condyle and the temporal bone, just by running through the gap there. And tension on the jaw. Now at this point, what you can do is um, place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Okay, so just sort of straight up, whatever that would be, cephalad, like that way. And very gently, push your tongue as a nice, soft, pudgy um, force up into the roof of your mouth. Mm. If you need to, you need to make, I need to make sounds, so my thing is like, I don't know, it sounds sort of like a cow when I do that. It's a Canadian cow. Um, so, ideal is happening there. You can coach people, and you should, you know, if it's being done well, then you'll feel that the um, the jaw, the TMJ, is being distracted. So you're not opening, which is like a, um, that's an, uh, you know, an osteokinematic movement of rotation and so on. You're just taking the whole jaw, and the tongue is coaxing the jaw down. So that's a nice relaxing thing people can do um, to decompress the joint and to help relax the muscles. Um, there's some other things we can do with the tongue that are integral in terms of uh, positioning the joint and uh, and changing its mechanics to you know to, to challenge a common issue. But I, I don't want to get into that right now. Okay. Um, and so another another you, question: um, Do you ever have a fear of causing more irritation at all? Yeah, I do. That's why I have like the lightest touch on the planet. Um, that's so basically, I'm in there, and I have the lightest touch possible, in which I can actually feel the texture of the muscle and differentiated high tone elements, and I compress that tissue until I just feel the very first resistance of that tissue to compression. So if they just had like a dental misadventure, it was yesterday, no. Maybe three days later, you can go in there. You can usually go in there. But the, so you've got a lot of inflammation present. It's very, very light touch. Very often, if you just hang out with that, then the tone will drop. And it's amazing. Like when the tone drops, inflammation subsides very quickly. Again, not all the time and not fully, but it is surprising sometimes what kind of results you can get. I do other things in terms of how I use my body. I tend to not use a pincer grip. People stick their finger in there and grab it with their thumb. I got a lot of tension in my forearm when I'm doing that. So my instrument, my fingers, I've got tension in them. That tension in them, allow, it prevents me from feeling most sensitively. So I'll have one finger in and I'll have the other hand out. And I'll normalize my alignment so I'm not hunched or standing or twisted or anything. So then my fingers are as gentle and soft as they can be. If I was going to work on a fine piece of jewelry, you know, I wouldn't do it, you know, on the subway at rush hour, you know. You need to have that thing locked onto a vice. You need to have that, you know, on a table locked onto the wall and your elbows resting on it. And you're, then you can do fine work. So this, that kind of stuff is helpful. And again, 
the client, you, you need to show the client, your fingers are in there, you've got permission to do this thing, you're doing it, you just go in 15, 20 seconds, toss, take your fingers out and say, hey, how is that? And you adjust. So you show them, you know, that even though you gave them permission, people give us permission all the time, right? I'm, or I've given my people permission for doing all sorts of things. And then after a bit, I'm thinking, geez, you know, was that such a good idea? But I'm shy to say anything or I don't feel empowered or something. So I show people that I don't care. I really don't care how many times I stop or start. I want you to be in control of this. And again, if I can't, if all that's not, you know, if it's not gentle enough, then I need to calm the person down, well, calm their myofascia down, some cold hydrotherapy and stuff. So then I can do like that tip of the tongue traction thing they can do on their own. So the ex this is the time you can do some extra oral stuff. A plagiar has got this, uh, this uh, TMJ dis uh, decompression technique and um, cold hydrotherapy and, uh, you know, let it calm down for a week or so before you, you know, get in there. Okay. Any more questions? Nope. Okay, what, what slide are we on, Ryan? Okay, let me you pull it take the wings or? Okay, on, just got done with slide 10. Slide 10? Yep. Which is, okay, and that's if yes, great successes? Yep. Okay, you got to move ahead, man. Click, click. The takeaways, these are things you want to learn. So let's start with um, 13, minimizing discomfort. Okay. Okay, so um, how, this is exactly that question. How do you make sure that you minimize discomfort? The client in charge. We talked about that. One can talk about it more. Let's not do that right now. You need to know your way around, man. You actually need to know exactly where you are, whether you're on bony tissue, whether you're on gum, whether you're on myofascia, and so on. Um, so you need to have a knowledge base that's, you know, cognitive, it's visual, you can see the structures even when you can't see them, and it's got to be in your palpatory sense, in your digits. So you need to spend some time um, with a skull. It can be a model replica skull, that's fine. You need to poke around with that. Um, again, next point, you need to relax your body. You've got the alignment issue we talked about. Any tension in your body, no, not so good. When I find that someone's not relaxing, quote, the first thing I do before I tell them to relax or take a breath or whatever is I relax myself. And I say 70% of the time when I relax myself and I've got this like, you know, this tissue tension approximating grip, when I relax myself, 70% of the time the person's tissue responds. So I don't even have to bother telling them to relax. I need to relax myself. The muscles are like children, right? They don't do what you tell them to do. They do what you do. Um, you need to respect the sensitivity of the, issue, of the tissues. These muscles are densely innervated, man. They are super, super smart. And uh, if you treat them respectfully and gently, gently, they usually figure it out. You need to figure out what they need to do, or they can figure out what they need to do. And uh, the minimum pressure required. So that's the idea of compressing just to the point of, um, of you feeling some resistance in the tissue. Very often, less than, it goes under the person's radar, the client often doesn't even feel that, um, that you're actually like, when are you going to do something then? Well, actually, I'm doing it right now, and I can know, I'm like, yeah, I am, let's just hang in there. So I get three releases, and then I be a little more physical, and they're like, oh my goodness, it actually doesn't hurt as much as it did before. So I, I do use their sensitivity as a gauge sometimes, for myself, but also to help them, you know, notice change. Um, any new questions there, Ryan? Nope. Okay. We still love you guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, slide 14 there, please. Okay. Um, so this is, this is just a screen capture of a YouTube video I've got out there. Um, if you do um, TMJ Palpation, Doug Alexander, in a YouTube search, you're going to find this sweet video. Um, I was going to um, ask you guys what palpation you wanted to see. We're going to skip that for now because I have no idea, you know, how much we're going to get through here tonight. So you can you can check that video on your own if you want to. The slide 15 there, Ryan, is 
when I was going to ask them what they'd like to see. Um, I'd like to go to uh, slide 16. That's the TMJ assessment. So, um, yeah, I don't just, you know, stick my fingers in people's mouths and hope for the best. I've got an idea of why I'd like to go there, you know. So it's commonly that, you know, they've got all sorts of headaches and neck pain and so on. And we've gotten so far by treating their neck and their shoulder girdle and all this stuff that's, you know, you know, down to where the hips and the feet and everything. But um, we're not getting as far as we'd like to. So that's the time to think intraorally. And the person's got all sorts of habits of punching and grinding, they're chewing their fingers and their hair and their pencil knobs and, you know, they're, they're keeping people awake at night by this horrible grinding sound. Uh, that's another time you think about it. Um, I've had people with um, sinusitis pain that was coming from masticatory muscles as well as tooth pain and sensitivity to hot and cold. So any of those things would, uh, you know, draw you to uh, thinking about it. Um, you also have people, you know, they're clicking and popping and, you know, they just can't, like, calm their jaw down. Um, as well, you can, you know, pain in the joint um, is, uh, is a good indication that you need to look into this. So this is my, um, my TMJ assessment. And in the uh, online course um, that I'm constructing right now, we go into this in a lot of detail, but giving you guys, like, a sweet taste, man. Um, so the first thing you look at is... Um, the uh, mandibular position, slide 17, Ryan. So the mandibular position is uh, is lit up there. And uh, yeah, if we go to the next slide, 18, which is a side view from Gray's Anatomy of the Jaw. This is um, this palpation we did already tonight, you know, where we have the forefinger resting in front of the tragus of the ear, the second finger just in front of that. You open and close, and you can feel the condyle moving upon. The, um, the temporal bone, the zygomatic arch. Um, so what you want to feel for there is um, you want to feel the position of the mandibular condyle and the, the particular dimension or sort of uh, the particular quality of the position is whether the condyle is anterior or posterior relative to the other one, you know, the left relative to the right or the right relative to the left. The way you do that you guys are all hanging out there, everywhere from here to South Africa. You're straddling your condyle, you know, the right fingers, forefinger and second finger are straddling my, my right condyle. My left forefinger and left second finger are straddling my left condyle. And I open and close a little bit, and I can feel the back of the condyle. So at rest, I ask myself, hmm, are these condyles in the same position? Or does one feel like it's in front of the other? So in an ideal world, they're always in the same position. If the person has got a, um, a disc displacement, where the, uh, this little shock absorber in the uh, jaw, the, uh, the articular disc, if it's, um, if it's um, slipped anteriorly, then that pushes the condyle posteriorly. So, you know, this it takes like what? Like three seconds to feel the condyle in its position. But if you feel a positional difference that's, you know, more than, you know, if it's a millimeter or two, you know something's not good inside the joint. Oh, a question, uh, a question in the chat. Um, is, yeah. the, is the TMJ typically worse on one side than the other? Yeah. It's very, it's, unusual, it's relatively unusual to have a bilateral TMJ, like, problem. Uh, you can be hypermobile both sides, but it's usually one side that's worse. Um, so... And it'll be one side where the disc, you know, is not uh, sitting properly. You know, more often than not, maybe 80, 80 85% of the time. Um, yeah. So that's what you'll find is that, oh, yes, if they've got bilateral um, issues with the TMJ, like in terms of clicking and popping and grinding, that's not good. And uh, you know, there's often a history of trauma, you know, like they fell down the ski slope and they, you know, their jaw got hit this way and then the pole hit them that way and then their knee or in separate incidents. So um, that's a complex case, man. And another question, uh, what disc is typi typically um, displaced? Okay, so this is the articular disc between, could you show them the, the frame there? Um, yeah, I don't have a good slide ready, but um, the, the slide 18. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, you can see the condyle of the mandible there, 
and uh, I don't even have my printout's not even in color, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyways, there's the condyle, the mandible, and then it's rounded, it's convex, it's uh, it's rounded superiorly like a little hill, and then it sits in a concavity of the temporal bone, and between uh, in between those there is a fibrocartilaginous disc, and the disc is attached to the condyle of the mandible. So there's two, count them, two functional joints on each side. There's the joint between the condyle and the disc, and then there's the condyle disc complex and its relationship to the temporal bone. And there's, different, there's a different movement that happens in these two. I know you, your minds are probably blown, um, but if you want to do this, um, Ryan, do you want to put me on the on the video again there, yep. please? Uh. <laughs> okay, I guess the video's working. Yep. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so we're straddling the, the mandible, right? Condo the mandible on each side. Right? Here, there, uh -huh. I can feel okay. So when I straddle the condyle, there's two movements that happen. There's the movement of the condyle upon the disc, and that's a rotation, almost a pure rotational movement. So if I'm sitting here like this, and uh, I don't know, let's say Ryan says, Doug, I'm having so much fun here. Hell, I'm packing up the girls and my partner, and we're heading, we're going to live in Canada. My jaw would drop. I'd go, wow. <laughs> Oh, so everybody go, oh, just let your jaw drop. Oh, that's rotation. It's not moving forward, is it? It's just rotating. That's the rotation of the condyle upon the disc. But then you're like, you're like astonished, oh. But now you, you want to go, Ryan, what up, right? So you go, oh, and you go, Ryan, Ryan. When you say Ryan, then the condyle of this complex translates, it moves forward. I want, to, I want to look everybody in the eye and like see everybody's like, they're going, oh, yeah, yeah, or what? Yeah. Um, anyway, so that articular disc um, allows for a complexity of movement. So when you're, when you're chewing and grinding, then you know, you're going to be locked in here. You're kind of pivoting and all this funky stuff is happening. The articular disc allows that to happen. And also, it's... Um, it's cartilaginous and fibrous, like there's this cartilage that's sort of embedded in this fibrous matrix so that you don't wear out your TMJ. There's hundreds of pounds of force for decades that we use here. And if you didn't have that, if you didn't have the fibrocartilaginous disc in there, there's no joint surface that could handle it, man. Especially, you know, if you don't want to just open your jaw like that, you know, if you want to like do all this other stuff, you need to have the disc there. And then uh, Leslie asks, um, for some reason I left to a vertebral disc. Um, I've been hanging out too much with chiropractors, I guess. Yeah, well, that can happen. Yeah. Uh, I actually I feel kind of a sour note. I'm just being a smart aleck. I've, I have learned so much from my chiropractic uh, relationships. So, um, Should we get back to the, the presentation? Okay. Marvelous, darling. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's, uh, can we go to slide 17 there? Yep. Nice. All right, so the first part of that TMJ assessment is like, hmm, what is the position of the mandible? So frame 18, there we go. Okay, and frame then one, one, one quick question too. Um, so basically yeah. jaw drop is rotational movement and lips puckering is forward movement then? Lips puckering. Mm. Well, when your lips pucker, when my lips pucker, oh my goodness. Yeah, totally. Thank you. 
So when you look at that person and you want, you're thinking about kissing them, you sort of go, oh. But then things are going well, and then you pucker up. Mm. That's, the, that's the translation, yeah. Thank you, whoever you are. I'd blow you a kiss. You know, and that would involve, like, <laughs> translation of the condyle this complex anteriorly to support, you know, all that stuff. And then another question, too. Um, if someone always chews their food on one side, does that affect TMJ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Not so good, eh? So you get a lot of uh, joint compression on that side. Um, you get a lot of ma uh, masticatory tension. And if you do it a long, like long standing, like how to say it, you do this when you've got a dental problem and the dental problem hasn't been resolved, right? So if it's like two or three days to get to the dentist, no problem. If you're in the Amazon, you know, doing some kind of like crazy like 26 day adventure thing and you have to chew on the right side or something for 21 days or whatever it is, then you're really setting the stage for a must, an imbalanced situation which you know, it's likely not, it's not going to be fully resolved when the dental problem is resolved. And then um, you have people who don't resolve dental problems who are chewing on one side all the time. Um, so, yeah, you're not, you're not um, irritating, the irritated stuff on, you know, the one side, but you're actually, you, you'll wear your teeth down, you know, on the, um, unquote, the good side. So, uh, you know, dental care should not be considered a, um, a luxury. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You want to go back to the yeah. PowerPoint? Back to the PowerPoint? Okay. Yeah. So on, um, on slide 19 there, I'm holding on to Stan's TMJs. Okay. Yeah, so that's just me. That's a screen capture from the fabulous high def video of me straddling um, my... Um, you know, my students, well, my student, uh, Stan's been doing massage like a few decades as well. Anyways, hold on to Stan's condyles, front, front and back on each side, and I'm evaluating them. Um, so the next frame, please. Um, I'm not sure which PowerPoint you have. Um, this this TMJ assessment, I wrote down the right condyle posterior. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a swelling and pain on the right condyle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so not only do you check for position, but you check for swelling and sensitivity. So if they have articular, if they have joint dysfunction, if when they're moving the jaw, the, um, the disc is not in the right place, um, then as they, move, as they translate in particular, then um, they're going to be stretching the tissue that anchors the disc onto the temporal bone, and um, that's going to be getting all sore and so on. So you're palpating for swelling along the joint space between the condyle and the zygomatic arch, and in particular posteriorly. So if you want to um, put your forefinger just in the back of the condyle, open, open your jaw fully so you're translating fully forward, and you can hook the finger pad on the back of the condyle and you close your jaw upon the finger pad, and uh, that's going to be sore, man. If you got swelling within the joint, that, you know, you're going to go, it's going to be very sensitive or you'll go through the roof. The old school way to check that is you stick your fingers in the person's ears, like your little baby fingers, finger pad going um, forward toward the face, and they open and close. As they close upon the finger, then um, this retrodiscal tissue is going to, uh, you know, be obvious in its sensitivity. Oh, so that's, here's, here's, a, here's another question. Um, um, I've been told by a massage therapist that rolling up a towel tightly, um, stuffing it in your mouth, and screaming loudly can help with TMJ symptoms. I'm sorry, did you say screaming? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, maybe everything except for the scream, personally. Um, so, what they're, I mean, I, I don't know what they're thinking of there, but basically, if you get, um, if you get a, a, a thin towel and you put it in between your upper and your lowers, then that's doing the same thing as the tongue exercise was doing earlier today. It's a pure distraction. You, when someone's got a, like, when they've got jaw problems, you don't, generally, you don't want to, like, open their jaw, like, stretch them. So, you know, like, if you hold on to people's lower teeth and you, you know, they've got a really stiff joint or something, like a shoulder, right? You know, you can stretch someone's shoulder. 
But just like the shoulder, if it's a frozen shoulder, the joint's not moving properly, then you're going you're gonna to hurt the person. Well, a jaw is like that, only worse, man. So the safest way to, if you want, if you've got some tension in the jaw or if you've got some restriction, if you want to challenge that in terms of the joint, then the safest way is to move the jaw down. Like if I'm standing, right, my mandible is like the floor of an elevator. And I just want the elevator floor to go down. I don't want it to tip. I don't want, you know, the front of the elevator to go down and the back of the state. No. The elevator goes down. So the mandible as a whole just moves toward the hips. So if you put a, um, you know, a, a towel in there and it's got, uh, and it goes the same, it's got the same contact, antero's posterior, like between the front teeth and the uh, molars in the back on each side, then that gives you that traction, gives you a bit of distraction. The relaxogenic splints, the, the um, you know, night guards and that, if they're not, um, you know, if they're not designed to move teeth around and stuff, then that's just, that's what they're about. Um, the screaming, I don't know. Personally, I think screaming is fabulous, you know, just on a general sense. But uh, if you've got jaw problems, you don't want to translate when you're screaming. You just want to rotate. So, you know, maybe more like, ah, 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 ah. When you really <laughs> scream, ah, you got translation. The translation is usually not a good thing for a person with jaw problems. So that's, that's the best I can do in that question. I think you blew out your speakers there a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I need to get, like, some crazy – anyway, never mind. Any more questions? Uh, not yet. Okay, fabulous. Um, slide 22. The next uh, element of TMJ assessment I'd like to cover is the incisal path. That's the path that the incisors take. You know, the front teeth, the front two teeth, top and bottom, are the incisors. Um, and uh, next slide 23. Uh, here's a picture of someone, they're opening their jaw and you're tracking those incisors and uh, you're saying, wow, next frame 24, as she opens, her jaw is pulling off to the right. She's pulling to the right. Not good on the golf course and it's not good with your jaw either. <laughs> um, so this is the pattern you get um, from a right-sided masseter, <clears throat> hypertonicity. Or and or shortness of the uh, masseter. There's other things that can do this, right? But pure and simple, the pure, pure as the driven snow uh, presentation of a right masseter, hypertonicity or shortness. Um, next frame, 25. Uh, I'm just showing how you document that. In Canada, you know, we're all about the charting, right? So, uh, you know, you write some words, gradual drag to the right, and I've got a little arrow thingy there that shows his dragging to the right. Um, next frame, 26. You can see how she's opening to the right. She's got a wiggle, 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 jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. The zigzag? Yep. Okay, I'm not alone on that. Good. Um, so on a pure pattern, that would be the right-sided uh, temporalis muscle. The temporalis is a check rein that controls uh, opening. Uh, the master is sort of like the, bull, uh, the bulldozer. The uh, temporalis, because of the fan-shaped organization of it, and it's uh, you know the different attachment angles upon the um, the uh, mandible, it can really influence um, the translation of the mandible, and it, it does influence it. So if you've got a myofascial trigger point um, or just tension in the temporalis, then it's check rein. You know, it's just. It's, it's really, you know, it's got so much on its mind, it just can't be a good check rein. So it kind of does this jiggle, wiggle, jiggle thing. Um, but you're still going off, you know. Like you're going off to the right, and you're still going off to the right. Um, the next one, 27. Splish, splash, I was taking a bath. That was <laughs> random. I shouldn't do a seminar for more than one hour. Uh, in this one, she's going off to the right. And then there's a, a, a sort of sharp jiggle, and she goes right back to straight on or much closer to it. And uh, if this was a muscle problem, let's say it's her right masseter that's dragging her off to the right, plus, you know, the masseter is attached to the zygomatic arch and down in the mandible. So as you open, any shortness is going to express itself as pulling toward um, – um, 
toward the, you know, because the right side is going to be pulling toward the right hand side. So if it's a muscle problem, it's not going to suddenly disappear. It's just going to get, it's going to pull more, more and more, right? So you, if you pull off to the one side and then boom, you correct. Mm -hmm. That's not a muscle problem, or it's not only a muscle problem. That's um, the signature presentation of a uh, disc um, problem. In this situation, the dentists like to call it anterior disc displacement with reduction, meaning that the disc is anterior to um, the condyle or part of the condyle. So that let's say it's my right disc, okay? Hang in there. If my right disc is a little bit anterior to the condyle, when I go to open my jaw, the left one's going to rotate, it's going to translate, it's going to be moving fabulously. The one on the right, it can rotate, but it can't translate because it keeps banging into the disc. So that's going to pull me strongly off to the right-hand side. So I'm pulling off to the right, and then the tissue that anchors the disc material onto the temporal bone is getting stretched more and more and more. It gets more and more taut until finally, boop, then the disc material is pulled, so it's, now it's, it pops up and under the condyle, and that's when you get the straightening away thing. That's when you get the audible clicking sound and all that craziness. So, that's what's going on there. Um, I, I, there's a million questions that would like, I'm sure people have questions about that. I'd like to answer them, but I think we can't right now. And, and okay. Le Leslie says um, he should try screaming. She has personal evidence that it seems to alleviate symptoms. Okay, so so Leslie, um, okay, so maybe if she could. Um, I'm wondering if when, when you're like if you have like a towel in your mouth and you're screaming, then that's just very interesting. I don't know. <laughs> If she wants to sit, you want to shoot me an email, Leslie? It's Doug at touchu.ca. So T O U C H U dot C A. I'd love to hear more about that, and I'm going to try that in the privacy of you know my own home tonight. <laughs> um, cool. Um, anytime you get like, yeah, it's a, I think there's a lot going on there. I'm really intrigued. Um, moving on for now. Um, slide 28, I was just going to talk more about the condyle stuff, but we're not going to do that. Uh, slide 29, uh, maximal opening is when you ask the person, let's go to slide 30 there, um, Ryan. Yep. You ask the person to take the knuckles of the non-dominant hand and stick them in a tier or a stack between their upper and lower incisors. And you see how many knuckles will fit in there. Um, so next slide, 31, Ryan. Okay. If the person can put three knuckles in, or three and a half, you know, or even four, and that, that's, that's this hypermobility. So the joint is moving more than it, uh, it ought to. If they can get three knuckles in there easily, and uh, easily and without any strain and so on, that's, quote, normal. Less than that is, is a, some kind of an issue going on. So the, um, the temporalis can restrict you um, by about a knuckle's worth, so you might get like two knuckles or two and a half knuckles in. The masseter is most capable of limiting restriction. So if you're getting one and a half knuckles in or two knuckles in, it could be a masseter problem. It could also be a joint problem or some kind of combination too. Below one and a half knuckles, then there's some kind of a joint dysfunction going on. You may have muscle stuff too, but muscles are not capable of limiting you um, to less than a knuckle and a half. Um, a little heads up, um, if you look at someone and they're talking to you and their lips are busy, 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 you're like, what the heck is going on with that person? Like, their lips are just really active. If you look closely, you usually see their jaws not moving much. And uh, so that's a joint hypomobility. You get like, the busy lips. Um, okay, next frame, uh, 32. Uh, lateral deviation is, um, is, a, um, is something that uh, is not going to be aberrant. Usually with a muscle problem, it's more of a joint. And we can't go into that right now. Slide 33 is an example of charting that. Um, so 
that's the assessment process in terms of the joint, its, uh, its position and biomechanics. And then slide 34, you need to corroborate that, right, by actually touching all their myofascia to, uh, to see if, if it's all hanging in there in terms of, um, you know, the position and movement potential of the jaw. So if they're pulling off to the right, and they have this ziggle, jaggle and stuff, you're going to be checking the, their mask on each side, the temporalis. You're going to find, you know, their right temporalis has got more um, tone to it. It's got a bunch of high tone elements in it and so on. Um, so you want to corroborate all that stuff pulls together, as well as the other indications we talked about, to uh, decide maybe you want to treat this person. Slide 35, please, Ryan. Um, now, we talked about universal precautions already. I can't go into any more right now. Basically, we treat everybody as if, um, as if they're very vulnerable. I guess the best way to say it. Treat everybody as if they're very vulnerable, even if they're tough and stoic looking. So you treat them gently, and you have a hand signal protocol that you actually attend to, so that if they want to break, they, you, they raise their hand, or what I say, make a sound, or you know, wiggle your, you know, wiggle your jaw, or shake your head, and out I go. Slide 36, please. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff about gloves that we're not going to talk about. Obviously, you need to have gloves on, and don't use um, <clears throat> uh, what you call it. Um, don't use uh, latex, right? I actually had someone have an anaphylactic reaction when someone at a seminar brought the wrong kind of glove. Luckily, we were teaching at a hospital, so that was handy. Yep. Um, so the first muscle I like to treat is the masseter, and I was going to show you a sweet video of that. We don't have time for that um, right now, but I've got a little treat for you so you can, you'll be able to check that out in a certain way. Um, the master's sweet, man, because you actually are not in their mouth, you know, proper. You're not between their teeth. So they could barely open their jaw, or they're afraid of choking and all that. You treat their master, you say, I'm just in your cheek. I'm not going to be choky, and, um, and uh, it's usually easily tolerated. So if there's any anxiety about, you know, working in the mouth, then I'll just treat the masters bilaterally that day. Treat the person respectfully, get them, you know, a sense of relief. And, uh, and show them, you know, a really felt sense that this is helpful and that they're in charge of it. They don't have some kind of agenda um, that could, you know, cause them uh, problems. Then they're going to be much more open to treatment the next time. Whew. Um, any other questions there, Ryan? Nope, not yet. Okay, here we go then. Uh, we're on a final stretch. Uh, slide 37. Um, yeah, so in the, um, in the Head, Neck, and Jaw Master class, you know, it's a two-day seminar that's going to be uh, on my online, as an online course soon, we go into a detailed assessment protocol. So that assessment stuff we did, we go into that in detail and get to review it and so on. Um, we cover not just treatment of the masseter, but all the elevator muscles, um, the uh, temporalis, medial and lateral pterygoids, uh, the tongue, the hyoid muscles above and below the hyoid. Uh, how do you help unravel head forward posture? Head forward posture can be a significant um, factor in terms of loading the jaw, loading the elevator muscles of tension. Um, and then really there's a whole thing with a lot of us where we do parafunctional things. We use our jaws for things that look like it's the function, right? Like our jaw is there like to chew and to swallow, but it's not that, you know, a meal. It's not there to chew gum for three or four or five or six hours. Um, so we need to challenge people's parafunctional habits. And I'm telling you, man, like people chew gum because it works for them. You can't just say stop chewing gum, don't clench your teeth. Like, duh, you just people can't do that. So um, you know, like any of these fabulous habits we have, you need to give them some relief. So the intraoral massage. As they learn to sense tension and release it, two, three, four treatments off, and they're like, wow, you know what? I, I'm not clenching my jaw. When I feel like I'm doing it, right now when I say, I'm just going to let my jaw relax, I can do that. Somehow I know how to do that, and I can do that. Um, so you know, you need to challenge these behaviors, but you need to support the person by giving them you know, the resource, you, you're facilitating the resource development in them that they know how, they have a felt sense 
of when tension comes in and letting it go. On an unrelated note, somewhat related, I had a client who had hiatal, uh, hiatus hernia, and we got to the point where he could feel the tension developing in his esophagus, and he could relax that. <laughs> and uh, he stopped pulling his uh, stomach up through his diaphragm. Um, and, and, so and, we can uh, learn. It's crazy, eh? Yeah, and then Leslie says, I totally want this PowerPoint. You totally want this PowerPoint. Yeah. Take the course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Get, get ready for the cell. Um, so the other part, the other thing this uh, looked at is um, hypermobility. So uh, people open three, three and a half, four knuckles, and so on. Where they're limited in opening, you treat their masseter, and suddenly now they're opening three and a half knuckles. Not so good. That that hypermobility and the instability is leading to all this muscle tension, but the muscle tension isn't effective. It's sort of gluing the thing together. So there's a few, uh, these three very simple exercises that um, I teach people and they teach their clients. I've had people help you know, in far, far reaches of the world just by doing these exercises when they're hypermobile. Um, and we also cover uh, referral issues when you, you know, consider referring what you might say as well as some case studies. So that's, that's the whole you know, masterclass course. It's going to be up there soon. Uh, but in the meantime, Slide 38, Ryan. Um, I've got the free masseter muscle course on my website. And this website, this website is fabulous. The course goes into just the masseter muscle, how to evaluate it and uh, identify when it's a problem and how to treat it. And, uh, you know, that's really meat and potatoes, man, for intraoral massage. If you can just do a great, respectful job on the masseter, you have really helped people. Um, so this course is available for free because I love you guys. Um, you can get two CU hours uh, for it from the National Certification Board for Therapeutic Massage and Body Work. Uh, wow, that was a lot. Um, or the regulatory bodies in Canada. Um, so this is how you do it. So if you want to, um, you know, reduce this a little bit so you can get your browser open, or can they access their browser on another pane or something when yeah. they're looking at this, Brian? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Frame 39, Ryan. All, all you people out there, go to touchu.ca. So it's T-O-U-C-H-U, -U, like the University of Touch. It's not .com, it's .ca. Yeah. I can sense it. There's hundreds of people around the planet. That, this is my sense of power and control. <laughs> Anyways, my, my fantasy is that everybody's clicking away. Um, so when you get there... Uh, slide 40, Ryan. Create an account. So let's click the sign up now button. Uh, one, Ryan. Yeah. That takes you to um, the place where you register. And uh, it's very simple, right? I just want your name um, and your email address and your address. Um, I'm not going to pester you with, um, I'm not going to sell your information to anyone. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've got problems with your account or something, we need to be able to reach you. So um, that's what we've got going on there. Um, slide 42, Ryan. Um, these are the last two. Op obviously, you can't fill all this stuff in now. Just save it. If you want, like, put this in your favorites or something on your web browser. But uh, in the Stay Connected area, there's two little things you can click, right? One is that um, you want to give us permission to contact you. And that's, um, you know, you can choose to do that or to not do that. If you choose to do that, then I'll let you know when the full-on course is there. I'll let you know when I'm teaching. You know, I'll let you know when other courses come up. And we often have different sales and promotions and stuff. So, I, you know, if you want to know about that, you better click that button. And the next one you have to click, you know, that you agree to the terms and conditions, which are basically that you're either a massage therapist and you're legal to work or you're being supervised by someone who is. Um, so that's what you do there. Once you create the account, uh, slide 43, Ryan, um, then you, um, you go to the home page and you click on the master course link. That's in red there. Um, when you uh, click on that, slide 44, um, then you can purchase the master course. You have the master course with all these courses. You have a little description. 
you get uh, information about what's in there, the manual and the videos and stuff. Um, you often get a sample video on YouTube and you get the, um, the valuation of the course with the various governing bodies as a continuing education course. And then and, uh, Le 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 Leslie asks, um, so if I can stick my entire fist in my mouth, <laughs> is that hypermobile? I don't know. It depends on the size of your fist. If your hands are either really small or your jaw is really mobile. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have like tons of questions, right? Like, oh, do you have, you know, are you, do you clench your jaw? Do you have clicking and popping? We're not going to do that right now. <laughs> um, but Leslie, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the love for you. I really appreciate that you're, you know, you're interacting with us. All you other quiet types, well, you know, the love is there, but the affection comes and goes. <laughs> I, need, I need some validation. So when we get validated is to get this master course uh, running. So on slide 45, um, that's where you hit the purchase thing, and um, it's free, man. Isn't that fabulous? It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, so, yeah, go to touchyou.ca, register, get the master course, click that you want to receive emails and stuff, because then I'll tell you when the um, head, neck, and jaw master class is available. Um, all those other courses are National Certification Board of blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Um, valid as well. Side 46. Thank you for letting me jaw around about the jaw. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Side 47. Right. This is a quickie. I'm pulling on Ryan here. What could we do next? Well, there's a lot of things we could do next. Um, I really, you know, I, I'd like to get to know people and try different things. I really want to see what can happen in terms of online learning, you know, in a static sense as well as, you know, interactively. Slide 48, um, I'm, uh, I got this nerve mobilization thing, which is, um, I use the length, elasticity or stretchiness and irritability of the nervous system as a framework for treatment. Uh, slide 49, um, came up with these fabulous videos that you can get through real body work or on my site, the Touch You site. Um, and we could, slide 50, do like a nerve mobilization jam. Um, so we could have it set up like this. we got the video camera going, and I could show uh, some evaluation of a client, do some demonstration, and uh, if people would ask questions, Leslie, come on out. Other people want to come out? Um, you can ask questions, find out some more stuff, and we'd have a ball if um, Ryan will let us. Yep. So, uh, and, and then Leslie, Leslie asks, um, no chance he's legal in CEUs in Florida at all or not? Yeah, these are not, I haven't, I have not applied to the FSMTA thing. Um, so they're not recognized in, like through that Florida thing yet. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Leslie. I'm, that's, if you remember the baldness of my head, that's, that's from a lot of excess activity in my brain trying to, you know, trundle down the, down the railway tracks of life, you know, trying to do too many things. Um, what was I going to say about all this stuff? There's something around that. Um, right. Here's the thing. Um, if you want these things, what I suggest you do is um, go on your Facebook and go to Massage Nerd. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you haven't liked it, you gotta like it, man. You like that puppy. And um, put in a comment, Ryan. I don't know what you're doing with that Doug Alexander guy. Keep him up in Canada, or you know, whatever. You know, I really like that, but it was laggy. Or the guy needs to pick up the pace. Um, I like the PowerPoint. I wish that you know I could have seen a demo. Like I don't know, man. And if you want uh, something else, um, if you have a nerve mobilization thing, I've got some fabulous assessment skills. Any of the courses on my um, website that I do, um, I could also do, um, you know, some kind of webinar or kind of like, you know, clinic uh, online. So I don't know. That's about, that's about all I got there. Um, do I do the last frame for fun? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Come learn <laughs> at <laughs> tetu.ca. And if you, um, if you want to shoot me a message, 
Um, you can also look for Touch You uh, on Facebook, also known as um, MassageTherapyPractice.com, or shoot me an email, Doug, at TouchYou.ca. So, should we go on the video thing and we can compare bald heads? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any, are any more questions or anything going on there? Uh, nope. That's because you're all logged into Facebook now. They probably left. Yeah. <laughs> People are addicted to Facebook. Oh my God! I know. Who knows? It's just been you and I and Leslie all night. Yo, no. <laughs> just quite a few others. <laughs> like, okay, honey, you know, could you put put the kids to bed? I got this like C workshop going on and. You know, they're in the den, and they've been on Facebook yep. this whole time. <laughs> but, you know, everybody's got their own particular needs, and, you know, it's up to, you know, it's up to them to decide what, you know, what needs to be met. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and it'll be recorded, too, so they can watch it again, so. That's great. Yeah, this is all available on YouTube, I think. Is yep. that? Yep. Well, Leslie just posted on my, um, my page, uh, we want more Doug Alexander. I want more Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get a towel and do some screaming tonight. Yep. That's what I want to do. Yep. And then we can also do like a Google Hangout so we can interact in small groups, she said. so. Great. Yep. Good. Uh, well, thanks for letting me hang out with your tribe, Ryan. Okay. Thank you very much, Doug. It's always a pleasure and always fun with you. Well, I, I feel like, you know, I'm glad. I think we got some traction here, you know, in terms of some good content. So. Yep. Definitely. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Good night, everybody. Good night.